October 23rd, Fall Town Meeting, Town of Hadley. The warrants then served, signed, and delivered. Quorum being present, I'm going to call the meeting to order. First order of business is I would like to introduce our head table. To my right is the Finance Committee. <laughs> Ms. Ms. Amy Fighting, Ms. Valerie Hood, Ms. Sue Rondeau, Ms. Terry Ushko, and Mr. Mark Kapak. <laughs> At this time, I would also like to thank the former members who worked very hard on the Finance Committee, um, Bill Gelinas, Lynn McKenna, and a long-term member, Mr. Howard Kosky. So I'd like to offer their thanks. <laughs> to my left, uh, Selectman John Moskevitz, Select Woman Molly Keegan, Select Woman Joyce Chungalo, Selectman Jerry Devine, Chairman Guilford Morin, Town Administrator David Nixon, Town Clerk Jeff Spankable, and our representative from Coleman and Page, Mr. Joel Bard. <laughs> Obviously, we would like to thank the Mothers Clubs for the refreshments in the back and having, oh, oh yeah, I, I'm the moderator, Brian West, if you don't know that. <laughs> having said all that, I'd like to first start with a Pledge of Allegiance, if everybody would please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Once again, we'll be using town meeting time. There are two microphones. Um, if you wish to speak to a motion or an article, please line up behind one of the microphones. You can speak once you have been acknowledged by the moderator. Please limit yourself to one time. If there's someone in front of you or behind you who has not spoken to an article, please let them speak before you speak a multiple times on a motion or article. Any amendment? needs to be submitted in writing. Um, so just take that in mind as we move forward. Having said that, on to article number one. Article one is a budget adjustment for FY 2015. The motion reads, move that the town transfer from free cash $39,206 for the following budget adjustments and I'll allow you to read them at this time. I'll entertain a motion and a second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Oh, sorry. Uh, select board recommends this three yes, zero no, one abstain, and the finance committee recommends this four zero. Hearing none, all in favor of article one, please signify by raising your green card. Article one passes unanimously. Article two is an FY 2016 budget adjustment. It's kind of lengthy, so I'll allow you to read it. The motion uh, reads, move that the town amend the fiscal 2016 budget by amending the vote on article five of the warrant of the annual town meeting held May 7th, 2015 by amending the following line items. I'll allow you to read them before I entertain a motion. Do we have a motion? 
Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Any discussion on any of the line items? Article two has been recommend, recommended um, four to zero by the select board and also four to zero by the finance committee. Mr. Moderator, are we just voting on the line items or the, uh, what the raise and appropriate that's underneath the line items? Uh, actually, you're, you're voting on both of them. <laughs> the line items are the line item detail for you and then the appropriations in the second part of the motion are how you're funding those line item changes. And Mr. Nixon could explain them if you have any specific questions. Uh, would you mind if he could explain them? It, 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 please explain them in plain English for us. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of moving parts to this particular budget adjustment. Going back to the annual town meeting back in May, we uh, presented to you a balanced budget uh, with the intention of coming back at the fall town meeting to do several further adjustments to the budget. One of those adjustments would be to provide the cost of living increases for the non-union personnel. We're still currently negotiating all of our municipal uh, collective bargaining agreements. So the non-union personnel adjustment is being presented to you tonight. We also were going to fund uh, what's called the OPEB obligation. We deferred that from the annual town meeting to the special town meeting. In addition, we had a loss of our uh, accountant. We now have an accountant service that's provided for uh, accounting services for us. We need to adjust that line item. And then finally, after town meeting, the state issued a new estimate for the kinds of money that they were going to share with us called state aid. And that number changed significantly. So within a week of uh, town meeting vote, we had thought that we had a balanced budget minus the adjustments I just talked about. The state aid got cut and we were more than $100,000 in the red. So we need to adjust that tonight. Um, I think the biggest item on this uh, uh, article is the OPEB adjustment of $245,000. Um, this OPEB adjustment is in line with our long-term strategy for funding the unfunded liability of future retiree health care costs. We've been working on this strategy for more than four years now. And if we take this vote tonight, it puts us strategically as a town in a very good position with respect to managing the OPEB unfunded liability. Uh, it, if this vote is taken tonight, then we would, uh, in the next budget season, we would have many more options on the table for managing those future unfunded liability costs than we currently have now. Uh, so I'd be happy to discuss any and all of this with you. Yes. Name and address, please. Deborah Levinson, 14 Holly Road. Yes. You have a question? Well, I wanted to speak to the OPEB item. Um, it, it, this seems like a very large amount of money to be um, to be asking for at this point. It's a 60 percent increase from what was um, what was voted on last year. And it is considerably higher than any of the neighboring towns relative to the size of our town budget. And when I say very high, it's five to 15 times higher than the um, uh, setting aside of money that's being done in several of the surrounding towns, perhaps to, to Hadley. Um, I, I just think it's an, eno an enormous amount of money relative to the budget, relative to what was put aside last year, and relative to Hadley's um, position in terms of the liability. 
I'll, I'll let Mr. Nixon address this. This goes back to the strategic plan that we have for OPEP. OPEP on, is the last unfunded liability identified by the Governmental Accounting Service Board. Uh, it, uh, it is uh, akin to the unfunded liability of the pension crisis of the 1980s. In short, we have future retiree health care costs that we are not budgeting for. And as time goes on, we will face, as a town, a constriction of our resources as more and more of our um, tax dollars go towards addressing, on a pay-as-you-go basis, the unfunded liability of the retirees. So this is an important issue that we need to address, and we need to address it aggressively. The speaker is absolutely right, Mr. Moderator. It is more than what other towns are doing, and that is because Hadley is a leader in this issue. Other towns have been less aggressive about managing this unfunded liability, uh, and some towns are ignoring it altogether. Uh, they do so at their peril. Uh, if we are able to make this funding work for us this evening, it will stop the, 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 the further accumulation of this unfunded liability. It will stop the bleeding. We wish that we were in a better place in order to tell you that we could manage this, but that's for future budgets. But we will have at least stopped the bleeding, stopped the impact upon the, our ability to provide services to you because of an unfunded liability. Are there any other questions about any of the line items in Article 2? Can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. Can you explain what services would be impacted if we put in a smaller amount into OPEB? <coughs> Since this is a future liability, it is a future liability. That future liability in aggregate is $7 million. Um, we need to address that over a 30-year period. We need to get our annual contribution towards OPEB up to a certain level. This is the first milestone. If we can achieve this, we will have stopped the future growth, all other variables being equal, the future growth of that liability. And then if we can make another adjustment next year, we will be on a pay down schedule and we will have managed this, this uh, issue over the long term. In terms of answering the question directly, uh, as more and more dollars go, if we do not fund our future liability here, more and more dollars will be devoted towards health care costs needlessly uh, and that will strip money away from all the other governmental functions that we perform, highway police, education, uh, library, all of them. Select woman Molly Keegan. Uh, and just to add to what um, our town administrator has offered in that regard, um, everybody here knows that uh, the budget is always a delicate balancing act and we do the best we can to try to um, balance current needs as well as future impacts. And to David Nixon's point, uh, given the magnitude of this liability and its long-term nature, it's something that's of great importance to uh, the folks who look at our bond rating. So to the extent we are not exercising prudent financial practices um, across multiple fronts, we could in fact see um, a degradation of the bond rating, and that's not something that we're willing to give up right now. We've worked very, very hard with our finance committee. Um, select boards over the past several, several years, and with you folks at town meeting, to put Hadley in a better situation than our neighbors, not to mirror what they've been doing. Thank you. Any other questions? Shell Horowitz, 16 Barstow Lane. Could you repeat what the finance committee vote was? Finance committee, uh, committee recommended four to zero. Thank you. Any others? Hearing none, seeing none, all uh, 
Article two is a two thirds majority. All in favor, please by signifying with your green card. All opposed to Article two. Article two passes unanimously. Article three. Motion reads, move the town accept the provisions of Mass General Law 44, section 53 F and three quarters, inserted by chapter 352 of the acts of 2014, for the purpose of establishing a separate revenue account, a receipts reserved for appropriation account to be known as a PEG access and cable related fund, into which shall be deposited cable television license proceeds which funds may be appropriated by town meeting for cable related purposes in accordance with the law, including but not limited to support of public educational or governmental access cable television services, monitoring compliance of cable operator with the cable television licenses or preparing for the renewal of a cable license or licenses. Do I hear a motion? Second. Article has been motioned and seconded. Is there any discussion um, on Article 3? What's this about? What are we doing here? I uh, will ask Mr. Guilford Morin to come up and explain this to you. Thank you. So all our friends in Boston decide we were kind of taking our money we get from K Charter Cable and kind of handling it appropriately. They wanted the whole state to change. So what they did is they set a law that says you have to create an account and all your charter money must go into the account and then at every town meeting to spend that money you have to appropriate like every other fund we have. So this is the first step. We're setting up an account to put the money into. <coughs> we can call it the HPAT account if we want to. And then an annual town meeting will appropriate money to pay for things for our cable access TV system out of that account. So all this is is just a financing thing that they said we need to do. And the first step is to create the account, and then at an annual town meeting, we'll do more with it. Thank you. Excuse me? What are the letters tag stand for? Public, educational, government, government. TV. Yes. Yeah. Article you. 3 was recommended by the select board 3 4 0 against 1 abstention, and the finance committee has recommended this article 4 0. Any other questions? Yeah, Andy Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. Um, will this fund be used to pay the HPAT director salary or will that come out of the general fund as it does now? Our goal has always been to pay for that salary out of the general fund. At last year's town meeting, we did fund part of the HPAT budget out of the, this account, or out of the money that this money comes from. Our goal is to get back to the old way of funding it out of the general fund. So my answer is we'd like to do it that way, and we hope we can continue to do it that way. But if funding does run short, we would probably use part of this funds to fund part of the operation of the cable TV. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Article three is a simple majority. All in favor of article three, please signify by raising your green card. All opposed, article three passes unanimously.